Hello everybody, I'm Stuart Hillard and welcome to Craftober. In today's demo, I'm going to show you how to make this fab trick or treat bag with fusible appliques. It's going to be great for filling with sweets. So the first thing that we need to do is to prepare our fabrics for fusible applique. So the fusible web that I've got is just a Vliso Fix, which is a paper-backed fusible web. Essentially, it's a sheet of glue that's been sprayed onto a backing paper. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is just cut out a rough square bigger than the shape that you want to cut out. Okay, once you've got that, you can start to fuse that to your fabric. Now, whenever you're using fusible web, you want to fuse the gluey side to the wrong side of your fabric. And that's super important, otherwise your applique is gonna end up upside down or turned around the wrong way. Not a good look. So we'll put the fusible web onto the wrong side of my chosen fabric. And then because I'm using cotton, I'm gonna use a cotton setting on my iron and I'm going to iron that fusible web in place. Now it does take a few seconds to do this, usually up to about eight, so don't rush this stage. Perfect, we're ready to cut out. Okay, so for my trick or treat Halloween gift bag, I'm going to be using a couple of dies from the AccuQuilt range. The first one, which is a little bit sort of star of the show, is called the Cat and Bat die. Okay, so it cuts out this fabulous scaredy cat at the bottom and also a bat at the top. So for those two shapes, I've prepared some pale grey mottled fabric for fusible web. The other die that I'm going to be using is the circle die. This is one of my absolute favourites. Who cuts out a good circle? Certainly not me. This cuts out a five inch, a three inch and a two inch circle and we're going to be using the three inch circle. So I've cut out and fused a piece of fabric ready for that too in a sort of rich cheddary gold colour. So let's get to the cutting. So I've got my go big here. We're switched on and ready to go. And I'm gonna start by cutting out that perfect circle. So when you're using a die which is completely symmetrical, it doesn't matter whether you have your fabric pretty side up or pretty side down. So just place your fused fabric over the top of your die. We'll grab the cutting mat. And my top tip for cutting mats is use the largest sized mats to cover all of your dies and then you can move them around and get the most wear out of your cutting mat. So pop it up to the machine and as soon as it starts going through you can let the machine do its work. How easy was that? Okay, so that's the circle cut out and we're gonna use that as a moon. Okay, the second thing that we need to cut is our scaredy cat. Don't they look brilliant? So I'm gonna cut that one first of all. I've got a large piece of fused fabric ready to cut that out. Now when you're cutting out something which has a line of symmetry in it or has a right and a left, you need to decide whether you want your cat facing to the right or the left. I want my cat to appear just as it is on the die. So that means when I put my fabric down, put it with the right side of the fabric or the pretty side facing up. So we've got fabric there. I can also cut my bat at the same time and I'm going to cut two bats out so I can fold my fabric in two and place that over the bat. And through it goes. So there we go, I've got my scaredy cat and my two bats cut out perfectly in a matter of seconds. Now, my next step 
is to remove the paper backing from those shapes. Now here's a top tip for you. Don't try picking up the edge with your fingernail. It's very frustrating, unsuccessful, and you'll probably end up damaging the edge of the shape. So instead, take a pin and scratch across into the paper. Then you should find that that cross picks up really easily and you can tear the paper off quickly and simply and there's no damage to your shape. Okay, so now you've got the fusibles all cut out, it's time to make the bag itself. Now I've started with a piece of fabric, just a rectangle, it's 16 inches by 32 inches. So you can get this out of a long quarter of fabric and I have backed it with some medium weight fusible interfacing. It's the kind of stuff that we use to stiffen collars and cuffs. It's just going to give my bag a little bit more weight, a little bit more body. Now I have turned a three inch hem at the top and the bottom of my bag and I've also folded it in half and given it a good press. Okay, and that just makes sure that I can see exactly where the bottom of the bag is. And once that's done, the last thing that I'm going to do, can you see here there are some little indents either side of that folded bottom? I've just measured an inch square and cut it out with scissors, and that's going to create the base of my bag. Okay, next thing we need to fuse the cat the bats and the moon to the front of the bag. So once you've decided exactly where you want to place your fusibles, put them down with the gluey side, the wrong side of the fabric against the outside of your bag, and then you can take them to your iron and fuse them in place. So just take your time over this stage and fuse those shapes onto your background. I've overlapped the bat with the moon just a little bit so it looks like it's flying across the moon. Should look quite spooky. Okay, so I've got them fused in place Next thing I need to do is just add some stitching around those shapes to hold them firmly in place. And I'm going to do that using my Brother FS130 and the darning foot. Let me show you how easy it is to applique using that foot. So once you've got your darning foot on, I've got a hold of the top thread. I'm just going to drop the needle down and up in the spot on the spot. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, using my darning foot, is I'm just going to stitch roughly around each shape, twice, maybe three times. So I've already gone round the cat a couple of times, and now, just for fun, I'm going to add some whiskers right in the center. So take your needle down and up, just to bring that bobbin thread through to the top, okay? So let's just pop the needle down and up, bring that bobbin thread to the surface and that just stops it getting caught up on the back. Drop your needle back down again and then I'm just going to just quickly draw in some whiskers and a little nose. And it doesn't matter how roughly you do this, I think the rougher the better. So you can see there, I've stitched around the cat and it just adds a bit of extra personality. Now all you need to do is do the same thing around the bats and around the moon and you're in business. So take your presser foot down, needle down and up, Bring that bobbin thread to the surface, 
and then drop your needle back down. We're using exactly the same skills that we use for free motion machine quilting, but in a very relaxed way. We're just going near the edge of the appliques. And you know, it doesn't even matter if you travel off the edge of the applique. What we're doing is just adding a little bit of extra movement and dimension to our shapes. It's a little gift bag at the end of the day. So this is a great way to practice your free motion skills. And once you've gone round each shape once, going round a second time really, really helps. You usually find the second time that you go round the shape, you're a bit better at staying near the edge as well. I certainly am this time. And then when you get to the end of the shape, just clip your threads and carry on and do the next one. So last bat to do, needle down and up, bring that bobbin thread to the surface, drop your needle down to start, and then stitch a couple of times around the applique shape. And the great thing about using your darning foot is that you can control the direction that you're sewing in. So you don't need to turn your work. It's very, very easy to get around that shape. So we'll just go around it one more time. Threads. The last thing that I'm going to do is quickly stitch around the moon. So I just need to change threads. I'm going to use a nice bright golden yellow for the moon. This is when it's good to have a thread cutter on your machine. When you're changing threads often, it just makes the whole job so much quicker and easier. How easy was that? So last thing then is to stitch around the moon. And again, just using your darning foot to sew a very casual line around the moon. But I think just to add a bit of extra texture here, I'm going to stitch right into the center of the moon as well really emphasize that circular shape. And that's it. The appliques are all done. How cool does that look? <laughs> okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is to make that up into a bag. And this is really quick and easy. I'm just gonna change the foot and go back to my regular foot. I've got the quarter inch foot attached Right, so all my appliques are done. Now all I've got to do is make this up into a little bag. Now, of course, to have a bag, we need handles, and they're the first thing. So what I've prepared here is a folded strip. This is about two and a half inches wide. Again, I've got some fusible interfacing on the back just to give the handles a bit of body. And then I've pressed it in half. Okay, right sides together. And all I'm going to do is stitch around that strip across the lower edge first of all. 
then all along one long edge and then all I have to do is turn the strip through to the right side. Now that's the kind of thing that often causes people a lot of issues turning straps through and there are all kinds of tools that you can get to make that job easier but I found the easiest way to do it is using a chopstick and I love Chinese food so I've always got chopsticks. Okay so I've stitched along the short edge and along one long edge I'm just going to clip the threads off and I'm ready to turn that strip. So here's the trick. What you need to do is open up and flatten the short end, the end that you've actually closed up. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to push that end in just a little bit, just to start it off. So I'm creating like a little indentation just using my finger. Okay, now the next thing, there they are. So the next thing I need to do is grab a chopstick and I'm going to use the fat end of the chopstick and I'm going to push it against that indentation. And then I'm going to push the whole of the tube onto the chopstick. There's the end. Pull it off the chopstick now. And then all I need to do is pull down on my strip it's like magic, isn't it? How easy. <laughs> so that's my strap made. All I need to do is give it a press, maybe a little bit of top stitching to finish it off, and then I can trim it in half, and I've got two bag handles. So what I'm doing here is just adding some top stitching to either side of my pressed strap. These are my bag handles. Top stitching just helps to hold bulky seam allowances flatter. And it also has a decorative effect. So you could even use one of the decorative stitches on your machine just to add a bit of something else. So that's one side. Turn the strap around and I'm just going to stitch down the other side. And I'm just using the edge of my quarter inch foot to measure a quarter of an inch in from the edge. And I'm just sewing along the back handle. It's really easy to do. This handle's about 34 inches long, but I'm going to cut it in half to make two handles of around about 17 inches. Okay, that's done. I can lift my presser foot and then fold your strip in half trim off the end and then cut it into two. So now I have two straps ready to stitch onto my bag. Now when you come to sew these onto the front of your bag, you just want to measure in an equal distance either side of the top of your bag to put those handles. And one edge is finished, it's already turned in. The other edge I just need to neaten. And I'm just gonna press it over to do that. And then I'll pop a pin in. And then I'm gonna sew it in place. I'll pin both of them in place and then I can sew them in one easy step. Make sure they're about the same distance in from the edge. But don't get too hung up over this. It's a little bag for collecting sweets in. The most important thing is that the bag's big enough to get plenty of sweets in. Certainly my priority. Okay, so under the machine, and what I'm going to do is just stitch a little box. And stitching a little box helps the handle to be really secure. The last thing you want to do is fill your trick-or-treat bag up with lots of treats and then the handles fall off and you lose them all onto the ground. Now you could even go around that box twice just to make sure it's really secure and then the handles are added.
There we go. Three more to go. Okay, so once you've got the handles all attached, it's a really quick job now to make this up into a bag. So what we're going to do is put right sides together and I'm just going to pin down the sides. Now the bottom of the bag's already folded, so we don't even have to sew across the bottom, which makes our lives a lot easier and quicker too. You'll notice that there isn't a lining on this bag. I've just used fusible interfacing, and that's absolutely fine for something that's being used as a gift bag or a little trick or treat bag. If you were going to make this as a more sort of permanent bag, then I would add a lining, just exactly the same size as the outer bag. This bag would also be fantastic for things like Christmas presents or a birthday bag. And obviously you can just change the appliques or even not have appliques at all. So again, quarter of an inch seam allowance and a straight stitch and I'm just going to sew along the sides. Now at the start and the finish of your seam, use the reverse button on your sewing machine just to reinforce the start and finish of your seam. And use a quarter inch seam allowance and sew all the way along. Take out your pins before you get to them. Don't sew over pins. It's not good for your pins, but much more important than that, it's really not good for your sewing machine. So just reverse back and forwards, and then we'll clip those threads. And we're just gonna do that on both sides. So I'm just sewing down the other end of the bag now, the other side. So straight stitch, quarter of an inch seam allowance, and just sew from top to bottom. Make sure you reinforce at the start and the finish of each of your seams, and that just helps everything to be nice and secure. Now you're probably wondering why I cut out those little squares, those one inch squares at the bottom of the bag. This is what's going to give my bag a base. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the bag and put my hand inside, and. There you go, there's the hole. Now flatten that seam. Can you see? I've put the seam allowance right in the center and you can push that to one side or you can open it out, it doesn't really matter. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew across that square. All right, and what this is going to do is it's going to create a gusset. So here we go, we'll sew across. And just for security, I like to flip this over and sew a second time, just to make sure that everything is really well sewn. The last thing you want is a hole in the bottom of your bag. Clip off your threads. And now we'll do the other side. So put your hand inside your bag. There we go, there's that little hole. Bring your side seam so that it's in the center of that hole and just push your seam allowance one way or the other. And then again, we're just gonna sew straight across that opening. And I like to sew once, turn it over and sew twice. Okay. Last thing then is just to clip off any loose threads and just give everything the once over and make sure that it all looks as it should. Now a really good thing to do at home is to go around those raw edges inside your bag with an overlocking stitch. And that'll just make sure everything's nice and secure and you don't get any fraying. Okay, last thing then, let's turn the bag right side out and fill it with sweets. What do you mean there are no sweets? And there we go. There's my scaredy cat and scary bat trick or treat bag all ready to take trick or treating. Now just give me the chocolate and no one gets hurt.